Mary Helen Dara, Taylor Automotive Family. Today I have the pleasure of visiting with Jennifer Archer, Program Director of Community Engagement here at UTMC. Cannot wait to speak to this vivacious, committed woman who has strengthened our community, not just here, but all over the city and beyond. Let's go inside and talk to Jen. Jennifer Archer, thank you so much for being here today. I have personally seen firsthand your commitment uh, to strengthening our community, but could you please share a little bit about your history and what motivated you to get behind the wheel here? Thanks for sitting down to talk with me today, Mary Helen. You know, as you know, during the pandemic, I was at United Way of Greater Toledo, and a big part of what I had to do was mobilize volunteers to help us pack meal kits at the building and also hand out food to kids that were unfortunately displaced from school, so they didn't have access to food. And in my free time, I found a way of giving myself some hope by volunteering with you, actually, at Slovenia Area Family Services and helping pack food bags. And as we started to see an evolution of us kind of move out of the everybody stay home, nobody be around each other, I was reflecting on the fact that I really felt like being in the space of helping with volunteers and making a real impact myself mattered to me. And the opportunity here at the university popped up and I felt like it was a really good place to be able to inspire other people to volunteer. And since that time, the roles really involved and kind of changed into the space where it's not just volunteer services, but it's also community engagement and community impact. So really been able to put my skills to work in a different way and hopefully pull other people into sharing some causes with me. Well, I have seen that. And what are some of the most challenging as well as rewarding aspects of what you do here at UTMC? The funny thing is that the things that end up being the most rewarding tend to be the things that start off as being the most challenging. An example that I can give you is about a year and a half ago, we received funding to create a mobile health unit that was going to go out in the community and do something to help with people having access to health care. And that was brought to me very early on in my change of position where it kind of had evolved to this community engagement place. And when I was first tasked with it, I knew that there were things I, could, I had in my skill set. It was definitely in my frame of reference. I knew how I could help get the unit out to the right places in the community. But there were other things that I didn't know how to do. If you had told me five years ago that I'd even be working at a hospital clinical setting, I would have laughed because I'm terrified of needles. <laughs> so there were some things that really were outside of my skill set. And I went home that night and called a couple of the key people in my life and said, I have this new challenge. I really don't know exactly how, about, how I'll go about doing it. And they came back to me and said, first of all, you can do it. You're the right person to do it. And our mobile unit's being delivered actually tomorrow. Um, very shortly, it will be out so in the community, exciting. bringing health care and health screenings to people. And I just can't imagine what an impact that's going to have on the community. So although if you had asked me a year and a half ago, there may have been a few tears in my eye or, you know, a couple of looks at my husband, like there's just no way. And here we are. It's going to be making a huge impact in the community. That is incredible. Yeah. Would you encourage others to get behind the wheel of this kind of work that you do? Absolutely. I would say in a second, there's such great reward to knowing that you're making an impact and that you're making a difference in someone's life. What I've learned in my time here is that you don't always have to be the loudest voice in the room. You just need to show up and you need to add your voice to the conversation. You know, when I stop and look at the ways that uh, the University of Toledo Medical Center can make a difference in the community, whether it be bringing the mobile health unit or making sure that our patients can live a life that's fulfilled and quality and healthy, there's so many ways we can make a difference. And you don't have to be medical to be able to make that kind of impact. Again, it's about lending your voice to situations. Sometimes it's about lending your expertise to situations. Sometimes it's about pulling other people in to volunteer and do a thing with you and the reward and how much it can change what our reality for our community is, is huge. So take the chance, do it. There's so many ways to get involved and make that kind of impact. Right, that's, I'm so excited to see where that leads and uh, out and about and uh, with the mobile unit. And that is incredible. But I know there's some other initiatives you've done. And what are a few that you were most proud of? 
That's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> During the pandemic, what we were able to do at United Way in a year, we built 100,000 meal kits for kids out in the community. Those children wouldn't have had food, a lot of them, over the weekends. Obviously, that's important. Here at UTMC, the list is pretty big, and it's been such collaborative efforts. Like I mentioned, the mobile health unit, it's a team of women that brought that to fruition. That's amazing and fantastic, and it's going to do great things. But we also partnered with United Way in November and did a first time ever food equity summit and brought people together from the community to talk about how we can look at best practices. How do we make sure that everyone has access to food? And that's brought forward other projects and programs already. One of which is, and this is a little bit of a story to get you there. So prior to that, we started having our employees volunteer occasionally with the Islamic Food Bank. And the Islamic Food Bank is an organization that gets food out to anyone in need in the community. They do such great things. And we started to partner with them just to volunteer, looked at other ways that we could maybe do things like bring the mobile health unit to some other distribution locations. But in our conversations internally, we were starting to see an, a need for our patients to have access to food. Some of them, when they go home after they've been in the hospital, don't have food at home for a lot of different reasons. And we approached the Islamic Food Bank and said, hey, would you be willing to partner with us on a pilot program where we can help our patients at discharge that have need? And we've been able to implement that. It's still early on in the process, but to me, that's so exciting that we can take it a step further to make sure that our patients are well cared for and that they have what they need to recover from whatever their reason was for being with us. I can't say enough about how connecting with people in different places and looking for non-traditional ways to partner right. on things. Food insecurity. Is exactly. And, and you would not think of that as a medical patient need, yes. but that's so vital. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, what's the one piece of advice you could give someone who would like to get behind the wheel of community engagement? I think I talked a, lot a, bit, a little bit about it earlier. You know, look for ways to get involved. You don't have to be the loudest voice in the room. You don't have to be the face of anything. You can be an advocate. You can be a volunteer. You can really help inspire other people to get involved and recognize the fact that even something as simple as introducing someone that you know to someone else in the community where you see a connection, the power of that as women, it can make things go in directions you'd never imagine, and have some faith in yourself, right? I remember during the pandemic, there was a moment, and I'm gonna share this real quickly with you, where when I had like three days to pull together a few hundred volunteers to go do a thing, and I was talking to um, John, John Amato from Jute Mode, and I called him about some t-shirts we needed, and he's like, Jen, how are you doing? And I said, I'm freaking out, John. The reality is I've got to do some things. I don't know if I can do them. And he took that moment and said to me, Jen, have faith that you're in the place where you need to be. Everything that you've done up until now has given you the ability to be what the organization and the community needs. And I think sometimes we forget to look at ourselves in that way. So biggest piece of advice I'd give this to my kids too, believe that everything that you've done so far in your life has prepared you for this moment where you're needed. Be that person. Well, thank you, Jen, for being here today and reminding us that our voice, no matter how small or grand, can make an into, uh, intense difference in this community. And you are a living example of that. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mary Helen. Thank you, Jennifer Archer, for sharing all that you do here at UTMC to positively impact our community. Let's head down the road and see who's next in the driver's seat.